An algorithm shouldn't determine where you live, but some websites are using an algorithm to write their relocation content. Imagine this, you spend months researching the best place to retire, you think you finally found it, so you buy a house, you move in, and then you realize this is not the town you thought it was. I get dozens of calls from people in this exact same situation asking me to help them find a new place to move because they didn't have the information they needed when they first started their search. I saw an article last week on the best places to retire and some of the recommendations were awful because they were generated by a computer, not by someone who knew the area and had actually been to those places. In today's video, we're going to look at where the computer got it wrong and then I'm going to show you four genuinely good places that I love to retire in North Carolina. Maybe you've seen and used some of Smart Assets retirement resources. I actually love the tools on their site. They're really good and a helpful place to start your financial planning for retirement or for life in general. But look at this map with their list of suggested retirement locations. Raleigh and Charlotte by far have the best resources for retirement of anywhere in North Carolina, but neither one made their list. This was my first clue that something was wrong with their algorithm. The criteria they used to formulate their list was tax friendliness, medical care, and social opportunities, all good things. For tax friendliness, pretty much every single location was the same, so let's set that aside because there's not a ton of variation in the tax rates within the state of North Carolina. The second criteria, medical care, was where I found my first red flags. In order to rate the medical care, they looked at the ratio of doctors to residents, but they didn't look at the quality of care. This map shows doctors per capita. The darker the blue, the more doctors. With all those doctors, the medical care must be great, right? Maybe not. Wake County is dark blue, so we do have a high concentration of doctors, but not as high as these Western towns out here, which is why the algorithm missed us. But here's the thing. If you get cancer or if you have a heart attack or diabetes and need to be hospitalized for any of these things, the treatment you'll get here in the Raleigh area is so astronomically different and better than what you're gonna get in any of these recommended cities. Yes, you can find doctors in the recommended cities and there are enough of them to make appointments, but but if you get cancer, you don't just want a doctor that has appointments available. When you look at health outcomes, rather than just the number of doctors, the differences are stark. I'm not gonna show you every hospital, but this pattern held across almost all the rural hospitals I checked. Their 30-day survival rates are moderate to poor. They don't have enough nurses. They don't have critical care doctors. They have poor outcomes for patient management, including pain management and palliative care. Most don't have cardiac ICUs or share their data with the American Heart Association, which seems a little sketch to me. Comparatively, Duke in the Triangle area has some of the best care in the country for cancer, for cardiology, for diabetes. Again, these scores are based on survival rates and patient outcomes. If medical care was the only thing that wasn't good, maybe you could have a nice quality of life in these places. If you're very healthy and do a lot of yoga, maybe hospitals aren't a concern to you, but it's not the only hiccup in the algorithm. Social life. To rate social life, they looked at the number of recreation and retirement centers per thousand residents, just like they did with medical care, which left them open to the same flaws quality versus quantity. Many small rural towns and counties have shrinking populations in North Carolina, and if a town is shrinking, that usually means it's dying. And when I checked, three out of the top five counties recommended by the algorithm all had shrinking populations. I do want to clarify that not all the communities they recommended were bad. There were actually some gems on that list that made it onto my list as well. But that doesn't mean that you can trust the algorithm wholeheartedly. As I dug into the information about social activities, I found some clues that made me pause. The first retirement center I researched was in McDowell County. I downloaded McDowell Senior Center's most recent newsletter, and the first activities I saw advertised were story time and checkers. And this made me realize that there is a big difference between rural senior centers and the things retirees ask me about when they call me. Some rural senior centers are not geared towards retirees looking to enjoy their retirement years after a successful professional life. Some of these areas, particularly the ones with declining populations, are poor and their resources are geared towards seniors who don't have the family or financial support they need. Also, in poor communities, older people might be less healthy than in the more populated areas, which means services are more geared towards people who can't get out of their homes easily or need more support in terms of living with chronic illnesses than the more fun retirement activities that people ask me about, like pickleball and golf and restaurant options. If you look at these two maps, you can see that the counties in the Northeast that are recommended by the algorithm definitely have 
some worse, worse health outcomes, which again is going to impact the type of activities that are available for retirees. And so I wasn't surprised when I went to the Bertie County Senior Center website and I read this. Bertie County is home to roughly 3,947 older adults. More than 31% of our county seniors are at or below the poverty level. Through the council's programs, we serve between 400 and 500 seniors and their family caregivers during a year. The Senior Center also plans day trips. They host two exercise classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and several arts and crafts classes are held in the fall, winter, and spring. I am not disparaging these services at all, and I know they provide incredible value for their aging population populations. My question is with the websites that use algorithms to help people looking for a place to relocate for retirement. Because from the hundred or so people per year that I speak to about relocating, I think those with the means to relocate probably want to go to a town that is much more active than something like Bertie County. The biggest town in Bertie is Windsor, and almost every storefront in downtown Windsor is empty. There isn't even a Walmart in the entire county. I don't think anybody is going to be attracted to Bertie County for retirement. Now, if it were only these two criteria that the algorithm didn't get right, you still might be able to find something of value in these retirement locations, but there was one last criteria they used. Their final criteria was percent of the population that are retirees. This seems like it would be a good thing to measure because the more retirees that are in a location, the more variety there can be in activities and resources for them. But as we've just seen, a town with lots of seniors can also mean that the young people are all leaving for better opportunities and the seniors who don't have the means to leave are staying. This isn't good because it's the younger people that start businesses and run restaurants and provide a lot of these amenities that people want when they don't have to work anymore. I don't think that metric is helpful at all in determining a good place to retire. In fact, my favorite spot only had a 13% retirement population, nowhere close to the 20 to 30% in many of the algorithm recommended places. Before we look at my top four retirement recommendations, there are some links in the description of this video that you'll find super helpful. You can find a link to register for my my newsletter, a link to schedule a free consultation with me, and there is a link to my awesome relocation website with tons more information about local areas. And now for my top four retirement locations. Whether you're a beach bum, enjoy the amenities of a larger city, an avid golfer, or love the mountains, there is a place for you in North Carolina. The mountains are incredible with hiking and fishing and quaint downtown shopping districts. If you want to get all of that but not be too far away from everything, you might like Hendersonville. This is one place that the algorithm got right. Hendersonville is 34 minutes south of Asheville, an hour north of Greenville, South Carolina, and two hours west of Charlotte. The downtown is a fabulous place to spend an afternoon. Local shops and restaurants are plentiful. It's designed for walking, and it's just a really nice place to be. Well, I look at Hendersonville like it's a little bit of Americana. It's like Mayberry with a little edge. It's all the stores are very up to date and modern, but still it has an old time feel. Uh, the sidewalks are wide. There's plazas to sit down in downtown Hendersonville. All kinds of great food to eat and beautiful stores to shop in. So you'd be welcome with open arms, but we all say come and adjust. Don't come to changes because we don't want to be changed. We love it just the way it is. And if you're leaving there to come here, leave there behind. You've got good grocery stores like Fresh Market and even a Sam's Club in town. Unlike some other mountain towns, there's a good range of homes available. You've got one level townhomes like this one at the lower end of the price range. For a little more, you can get into a single family, single level home like this one with included lawn care. Or if your budget is more significant, you can get into this luxury home on over an acre. Many of the communities recommended by the algorithm didn't have any 55 plus neighborhoods, but Hendersonville has four of them, which is a good amount for a town with 15,000 people. People. The famed Blue Ridge Parkway entrance is just under an hour away, and there's no shortage of mountain sports nearby. Whether you want to hike, hunt, fish, kayak, bike, or golf, like I said before, if medical care is your number one priority, Hendersonville isn't going to be your number one choice. But if you're not concerned about medical care and you love the mountains, you'll want to check out Hendersonville. If big skies and coastal views are your thing, Beaufort and the surrounding area is definitely worth a look. While most coastal towns are vacation destination, and Beaufort is no exception, many of North Carolina's coastal towns don't have a quaint historical downtown like Beaufort does. I love visiting Beaufort. The town is a genuine community despite its vacation 
vacation amenities. There are lots of opportunities. You can come to, to this yeah. area and you can be as involved or uninvolved uh -oh. as you want to be. Mm. Many years ago, you know, we rolled the streets up at five o'clock in There's the off season. That's not the case anymore. Now. I was just looking at there is activity all the here all the time. There's a hospital in neighboring Moorhead City, but like I said, if medical care is your first priority, you're going to look elsewhere. If fishing and boating and the relaxed atmosphere of the coast are your priorities and you don't want something that's primarily a tourist destination, Beaufort deserves a look. It reminds people of what's important because we don't have glitz and glamour and malls and all the fancy stuff. So this sort of goes back to the basics of walking around with your family, shopping in little local locally owned stores, right. watching a parade, donating a bike. You can find quaint older homes in town for sale, but there are also new construction homes being built in town. These new homes are just a 30 minute walk to downtown or an eight minute bike ride. For its increased price, this home is just two blocks from the waterfront. If your budget's larger, this historic home gives you a second dwelling to house the kids and grandkids when they visit. And if you live at the coast, they're gonna visit, so get the extra room. You won't find any big box stores here. There's a Piggly Wiggly in town for your groceries, or you can head over to Moorhead City, which is like 10 minutes away for a Lowe's Foods. This coastal town is for living the small town life. The Crystal Coast Center for the Arts, home to the Carteret Community Theater, is just a 10 minute drive away. And if you're ever unsure of how to spend your afternoon, just hop on a ferry with a picnic and head out to the Shackleford Banks to enjoy an afternoon with the wild horses. Now, I love being near the mountains and I do love the coast except for the sand. I'm a Florida girl and nobody likes sand if you're from Florida. But seriously, the Greater Triangle area has got to be the best retirement spot in North Carolina for all the reasons that the algorithm was supposed to be taking into account. The medical services here are by far the best in the state and in the country for many things. I just don't think there's a question about that. We've got four major hospital systems, Duke, UNC, Rex, and Wake Med, plus the VA Regional Center in Durham. Recreation centers in the towns around the Triangle are catering to a growing and active retirement population. I was actually going to go over to the Senior Center here in Apex and just show you some of their amenities and hopefully talk to some people, but I totally forgot that it's a polling place and it's election day, so we're not getting in there today, unfortunately. But I did want to show you, like, on their website, they have so many things at the Senior Center, and you can find these kinds of things in pretty much every town throughout the Triangle, you know, in Raleigh, and Cary, Holly Springs, like, they all have lots of senior based programs. You have almost 50 retirement communities, 55 plus communities, and many of those have lots of activities within the community. But if you're not in a 55 plus community or you don't want to be for whatever reason, there are just so many activities and events and things directly geared towards seniors and retirees um, that you're just not going to find in any of these small towns. All kinds of social programs, trivia night, karaoke night, special interest clubs, lots of different book clubs, quilting clubs, writers clubs, crafters clubs, movie night clubs, classic TV clubs. Like, I can't even tell you, like, gosh, this looks like a lot of fun, actually. Whether you're looking for active senior centers or golf communities or a 55 plus community, the Triangle has more of these than the more rural places suggested by the algorithm. We've also got close to 50 55 plus communities in the Triangle in all kinds of price points. So we're at the retreat at Cedar Crossing. This is a 55 plus community in West Apex. Um, it's about 10 minutes from that downtown area where the senior center is. And this is one of the communities that's not super amenity rich. Like some of the 55 plus communities um, will have a ton of amenities and clubs and it has basically their own senior center at the, at the property. Um, this is one of the ones that is smaller. It's a really cute little community. Um, properties are like 1,400 to 2,600 square feet, so lots of different size variations um, and small lots. And you've got bocce on site and pickleball on site um, and walking trails. So you've got walking trails um, from the town of Apex within the community, but it's also super close to the American Tobacco Trail, which is like 30 miles long. So lots of places to kind of be outdoors. There's a link to homes for sale in 55 plus communities, as well as one level homes and golf communities in the description below. The Triangle is booming and just anecdotally I can tell you that many retirees are moving into the area because they want to be near their children and grandchildren. People tell us this all the time and because the Triangle has such booming industries providing jobs it's attracting families across generations. But if the city's too big for you there's one small town where you can actually get the best of all worlds. There are lots of small towns around Raleigh that would give you that small town feel but there's just something unique about a small town that isn't immediately outside a 
city. And there's one small town outside of the Triangle that actually has good medical care and a great small town feel. Pinehurst is in the south central area of North Carolina, commonly called the Sand Hills. It's home to 18,000 people and there are five dedicated 55 plus communities, which is a lot for a small town. It's known for its golf resorts and its equestrian community. There are more than 40 golf courses and a 15 mile radius of Pinehurst. The North Carolina Philharmonic is located in Pinehurst and the North Carolina Symphony performs six times a year. Moved here from uh, Cary, North Carolina after living there for 20 years. Pace of life, I think, is the main difference. Uh, Cary's got an upwardly mobile, busy, engaged population and style of life. And in this area, it's much more relaxed and uh, peaceful. Right. So a good number of retirees and then a rural farming agricultural element. There's a military uh, presence as well. In actuality, it adds a, I don't know, a good good sense of safety, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are Broadway performances at the Judson Theater and a very active arts council. There's numerous activities at the Cannon Park Community Center and Moore County participates in the annual senior games. Uh, there's a variety of activity and opportunity within the context of that laid back, familial, uh, peaceful, almost uh, maybe, dare I say, Mayberry. If you like this video, you might like this other one that I did about retiring in North Carolina.